a small selection of the items you'll be seeing in this video because this video focuses on news. No reviews this particular week. Why? Well, news has been piling up. I haven't been able to open the door of my office because it's all been backed up behind the door. So I need to sort this out. In this video, we're looking at a whole host of hi-fi hardware, all the way from the low cost value for money price points to the higher eye-watering levels, I would say. First off, well, we're going slightly quirky and the light speaker from Transparent. And it lets you alter those lighting effects from the burning of coals type light or the flickering candlelight right through to a full-on reading light. There is in fact a sort of bass and light element that sits at the bottom of the speaker. And that allows for colour variations and subtle flicker effects to follow the music tuned to give off the atmosphere of a real flame. You get 10 hours of battery life from the speaker and also a detachable handle. And possibly the most interesting feature, borosilicate glass. Now borosilicate glass apparently is glass that will not crack under extremes of temperature. Now if you're planning a weekend jaunt to the Arctic Circle, I'm not sure about that sort of extreme, but certainly in normal temperate areas, this particular portable speaker will withstand the climate. So I'm told. Oh, and you also get aluminium grills. It's eco-friendly as well, which is very much in the news as I'm making this video. So you can follow the life cycles of this product via the company tracking at every stage, whether that means production, distribution, purchase, repair, reuse, or recycling. And yes, you did hear right, repair. This product can be repaired. Shock horror. On a techie level, the speaker itself arrives with 5 watts of power, a 64mm full range driver, and a 76mm passive radiator. Bluetooth is also included. Pricing? Well, in the UK, that's £290. In Europe, that's €320. Euros, and in the US, $370. Next up, we're looking at a three box pre amplifier called the Relentless from Dan D'Agostino. So why three boxes? Well, two of the chassis components are dedicated to a channel each, left and right, and the third is devoted to power. The three chassis interlock through special mechanisms in the mounting feet of each individual chassis. That means a 30-pin interlocking 20-amp gold-plated connector, eliminating wiring normally used for these applications and thus isolating the audio signal. Shielding and line conditioning circuitry filters RF noise on the AC power and compensates for asymmetric power waveforms and DC on the mains. Power for the preamp stages comes from two toroidal transformers, one dedicated to the analog circuitry and one for the digital and control circuitry. On the front are the rather noticeable volume controls. Each of those volume controls is constructed using 14 separate metal components, 
while the volume settings are displayed via the Swiss watch-inspired volume ones, or can be displayed numerically from 0 to 99. This is also a two-source, two-zone preamplifier. This means that it can simultaneously control the switching and volume of two sources in two separate rooms or zones. A digital streaming module is optional, but you do get yourself a remote control, available in silver or black, or, well, any other colour you like, really, if you go the custom route, but I suspect that will cost a wee bit more. Don't have prices for that, unfortunately. I do have a price for the preamp itself. The Relentless will cost you £165,000, and that includes installation. And let me tell you this, you will need installation. Next is a kit, a speaker kit, from Falcon, called the IMF200. This speaker kit includes Falcon's own drive units, Italian birch ply cabinets, and Falcon factory assembled pre-wired crossovers. You're offered YouTube videos to help you with the build, to give you a little bit of assistance. All the tools you need are included in this kit. There's no soldering required. And the amount of time to put these speakers together, well, around two hours is the going rate, I think. The IMF200 is a three-way quarter-wave transmission line system featuring the Falcon B139 base driver together with the Falcon B110 and T27 drive units. Other components include CNC-engineered B110 retaining rings, those crossovers and cabinets I mentioned, and, oh, well, those cabinets, they are veneered in natural wood, light oak, or rosewood. This is an 8 ohm system with a sensitivity of around 86 decibels, so it'll need a bit of a push to get going, so I would have a half decent amplifier at your disposal, spanning 119 centimeters by 27 centimeters by 41 centimeters, plus an extra centimeter or so for the grill and binding posts. The weight is 34 kilograms per speaker. And that means around 90 kilograms shipping weight. And if you do order one of these kits, you're gonna get this whole thing on a pallet because it's a fair size. Prices, well, for walnut and light oak, that's 2,795 pounds each. Or if you upgrade to the rosewood finish, 3,195. Next, we're looking at a compact 2.1 speaker system from the French company Cabas. of the Pearl collection, this compact 2.1 setup features a powered subwoofer and a pair of satellite speakers. The so-called Keshi includes a 22 centimeter diameter subwoofer, which houses 1,050 watts of digital amplification. The system offers Bluetooth, Ethernet, optical, and Wi-Fi. The Keshi's satellite speakers measure eight centimeters in diameter, and they sit on little chrome-plated stands like the subwoofer. And you also get three meters of cable to help you position the things. Cabas integrates brackets, enabling a choice of five angled positions. Inside the satellites are new patented drivers. You also get a programmable remote control as part of the system. Available in black or white, the price is 2200 and 99 pounds. Next up, we're looking at Mobile Fidelity from the USA and a cartridge called the Ultra Gold.
the Ultra Gold Moving Coil cartridge has a Japanese derivation, but it's also been made in conjunction with Spiral Grooves Alan Perkins. Within the cartridge, you'll find a nude Shibata stylus attached to a boron cantilever with a neodymium magnet and a Permandor yoke that's housed within an aluminium brass extrusion. Oh, and for those who hate bolts and nuts during installation, well, you can be happy to learn that the chassis has threaded insert holes. The cart itself weighs in at 7.3 grams with an ideal tracking force of 2 grams. So, nothing too startling there. Offered in gold or black, the price is £1,499. Next, well, Lynn owners can rejoice because there's yet another upgrade for the LP12. The Climax LP12 now features the Radical system, including a new motor providing speed management technology, a quiet power supply, and, as an addition to all of that, the all-new flagship cartridge called the Ecstatic. Now, in the LP12's, what, 48-year history, the company has released over 40 upgrades, and this is another one. They certainly know how to get the best out of the original technology. If only that could have happened to my dad's Morris Minor. So what you get is a new motor. The new motor has been designed to reduce electromagnetic interference, and that's helped by a new acoustic housing that decouples the motor from the deck more effectively. The motor itself also features smaller, lower noise components. There's also a motor control unit. Lynn's new reference turntable power supply features new speed management technology to keep that 33 and a third speed to exactly 33 and a third. This has been arranged via a digitally managed motor control and the latest motor technology. The new Radical has a persistent auto calibration feature for consistent and accurate speed management. Then there's the power supply. The improved board design at the heart of the new Radical incorporates quiet power supply rails, coupled with the use of smaller, more modern components. The power supply features a new six-layer board designed and manufactured in-house. That helps to maintain short signal paths and lower noise via dedicated ground and power planes. Next up is the ecstatic cartridge. Utilising aluminium bronze inserts and a custom honeycomb cut into the cartridge body, the Ecstatic is, well, skeletonized, I suppose you'd say, so the overall mass is reduced to around 7 grams. You'll also find a micro ridge stylus hanging off the end of a rather nice sapphire cantilever. And speaking as somebody who does use a cartridge with a sapphire cantilever, well, I can't recommend them highly enough. They make a big difference, let me tell you. And they also cost rather a lot of money. In this case, the Ecstatic is five and a half thousand pounds. The Radical system as a whole arrives in a sort of standard chassis for 4,250 pounds or in a rather swish machined enclosure for six and a half thousand pounds. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the Climax level LP12 is £21,795. There are trade-ins available, there's upgrades available, and there's ways to cut corners in terms of cash. So I recommend, if you are interested, calling Lynn and contacting them directly and discussing your own personal situation and seeing if you can come to some sort of arrangement or deal. What I'll do, I'll put a link below in the description. In fact, there'll be links to all of these products down below in the description 
if you need to use them. Next, we're going to the other end of the price scale for a pair of powered speakers from Audio Engine. These are A1 MR Wi-Fi speakers that include app support from iOS and Android platforms. They feature in-app streaming services and these speakers support multi-room play and network play. The speakers themselves have to be connected with a cable, so they are not wireless, but they support Wi-Fi. And that means that one speaker will be the master speaker and that will have all of the inputs and outputs on the rear, and the other speaker will be the slave speaker, the passive speaker, which has nothing at all, well, next to nothing on the rear. So the master speaker, which has all of the interesting bits and bobs, includes a figure of eight power socket. It also includes a pairing button. You'll also find a volume power knob. There's also a subwoofer output and a three and a half millimeter input jack and nothing else after that because these speakers are not really designed to hang sources off. They're not really speakers which encourage you to plug in your turntable or your CD player and to push a source signal through those speakers. These are really speakers to connect to your home network and to stream music through the speakers themselves. Inside is a 15 watt class D amplifier. On the front you'll find a 70 millimeter mid bass unit with a 19 millimeter tweeter up top. These speakers span around 152 millimeters by 102 by 133 millimeters and weigh 1.4 kilograms for the master and 1.1 kilograms for the slave speaker. In terms of price, you're looking at 148 pounds or 229 dollars, and intriguingly, the same for euros, 229 euros. Next, we're looking at a bit of a, a tweak, uh, an upgrade. One that's been brought upon, Primer for the NP5. Primer NP5 Prisma Mark II is a music player which returns with new features. Now you may have heard of the AKM Chip Factory Fire, which caused and still causes a whole host of disruptions, chip shortages and the like. Well, Primer has suffered as well, especially when it's trying to sell its NP5 Prisma network player. Basically the critical sample rate converter chip at the heart of the MP5 Prisma design was an AKM chip and well the company can no longer source it so it's going to have to look elsewhere and has looked elsewhere and it's found one. So the new SRC chip is from Texas Instruments who've galloped over the hill like the 7th Cavalry that they are. The chip itself is the SRC4190, but there's a couple of extra little wrinkles, which means that the MP5 Prisma Mark II now supports DOP output as an available setting option when using Rune Ready and DOP Ready DAC. Also, the MQA pass-through allows for Tidal Master and MQA files from an NAS to pass through for higher resolution processing by a connected MQA capable DAC. Hope you are following that, maybe you can explain it to me later. Now all the other features and functionality of the NP5 remain as is, or as was, with connection and control features that include AirPlay 2, Bluetooth, Chromecast built-in, Rune Ready, Spotify Connect including Spotify Hi-Fi when available, and a host of other features. And while Primer works towards full Rune Ready certification of all its Prisma models, the company is keen, keen, let me tell you, to emphasize that 
Chromecast can be used as a Rune endpoint, providing full features and functionality, including Tidal, Master, File, and Gapless playback. The only limitation being that file resolution is capped to 24-bit 96K. How many people out there actually use resolutions higher than 24-bit 96K on a regular basis? I'd like to know, actually. Maybe you can tell me in the comments. Finally, to celebrate the NP5 Prisma Mark II availability, and hurrah, I would say, for that, Primer will provide a complimentary 60-day introductory Rune subscription to all Primer Prisma customers writing to, and I'll put the email address down below where you can write to, with their model's name and serial number. Price for this network player, £550. Next up, well, we're staying digital and we're looking at a music library from Melco. And the new N50S38, which benefits from a heavy 1.7mm thick full width chassis, an IEC power inlet with noise filter, an enhanced main board with a specially made 3.84TB SSD drive. That lot are coupled to a new rigid layered SSD cradle, plus a new dynamic PSU with 25% more output. You also get new feet, and there are four USB ports. There's a USB 3, expansion and backup, plus a dedicated USB DAC output, ready for connection to USB DACs, be DAC equipped amps or active speakers. These ports have been created so that when you connect a USB device, you don't have to configure it in any way. The back panel also includes Melco's dual Ethernet ports, which provide a dedicated player port in addition to the standard LAN port. The idea for the player port is to minimize the unwanted effects of noise on the music signal. On the front, you've got an OLED display with push button control, plus Melco's intelligent music library suite comprising the Minim server and Song Kong software. This product is Rune ready, DSD compatible, and offers app control with support for Tidal, Cobuzz, and VTuner. Available in silver and black, it's priced at £4,999. Next, we have a product from iFi. It's the Hip DAC 2, which looks like a hip flask. Why? Because it can? Why? The Mark II version arrives in a rather nice sunset orange. The 8-core XMOS chip, which processes the data received over USB, has been replaced by a 16-core model. The new chip's enhanced processing power improves overall performance, as well as enabling the HipDAC 2 to deliver full MQA decoding. There's other circuit improvements too, including a new version of iFi's GMT, that's Global Master Timing Circuitry, featuring a new crystal clock for lower jitter. Inside you'll find a Burr Brown DAC chip, which supports 32-bit, 384 MHz, but also DSD from DSD64 all the way up to DSD256. Both PCM and DSD remain bit perfect in their native form right through the analog conversion. Either side of the volume knob, you'll find a couple of lights which will show what sort of file you're playing and also what the resolution is of that file. For headphones, the amplifier stage can deliver 400 milliwatts into a 32 ohm headphone load. You also get switchable gain and a bass boost feature. There are two USB ports, Type-A for audio data and USB-C for charging. 
Now, the Type A input features a male connector rather than a female. Why? Well, according to iFi, for greater mechanical integrity. It also offers an advantage to users of iPhones and iPads with Lightning ports because it accepts Apple's Lightning to USB camera adapter without requiring an additional female to male USB adapter. Two outputs are included. One is a three and a half millimeter headphone port and the other one is a balanced Pentacon. Hurrah! In addition, the three and a half millimeter output benefits from iFire's proprietary S-balanced circuitry, which says the company cuts crosstalk and related distortion in half when used with regular single-ended headphone connections. In terms of battery life, well, you're looking between eight to 12 hours, depending what you're doing. And this package comes with three cables inside the box. So you'll get a USB OTG on the go cable, ideal for connecting Android devices and PCs and Macs with USB-C ports. You also get a USB-A cable and a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. That Apple Lightning to USB adapter I mentioned earlier, well, you're gonna to have to buy that yourself, I'm afraid. That's not in the box. You can also buy yourself a rather nice vegan-friendly case. It's faux suede in dove gray. Sound rather nice. It has stitch detail and an iFi logo. Oh, and this case actually fits the original hip DAC as well as the Mark II version. Prices, well, the Mark II version with the sunset orange finish, price of that is £189. As far as that rather nice dove grey case, well, you're looking at £29. And if you're desperate to grab the original hip DAC in, what was it, petrol blue, was it? Petrol blue? I think it was petrol blue. You can find those, well, you can find them if they still have them, £469 while stocks last, you might say. And that's it. I hope you found something of interest in that lot. And while I was putting this together, two or three more news items popped through the pipe. So as you watch this, yet another news video is actually already being built. Thanks for watching the video thus far and many thanks also for your support and if I can ask you just to click down yonder here at the subscribe and like buttons that would be very nice of you and also helps this channel to move forward and all of that motivational talk because YouTube loves that kind of thing in its algorithms as you know and don't forget down below to check out all the links for the chapter headings which you can use to bounce around or skip about this video if you need to recheck or double check any products I've talked about. There's also my social media links, my website which has a host of editorial on there you will find on this channel. Also I'm on Patreon and if you can support me on Patreon which keeps me going in terms of the YouTube channel itself, please that would be wonderful. There's some exclusive stuff over there too so you might want to check that out. I will be back next week with another video. I don't know, something review-y, I suppose. Not sure what, having a think. Anyway, I hope you can join me because I'd like to have your company. Until that time, bye-bye for now.